the heavy duty Patterson High School accent and the cowboy boots. Uh, Coach Runk was incredibly, again, he is this, this lesson that I was speaking about earlier, whether he was coaching the club team at Arizona, whether he was being the first football coach ever at Towson, or leading the Towson Tigers to greatness for the 31 seasons that he coached there. He was giving everything he had to every single person that he's ever worked with. Um, if there are small children or women in the room, having heard Coach Ron before, you, now would be the time to put your earmuffs on. Please, can we show the video? proud and humbled to be able to present Coach Carl Rump for his induction into the IM LCA Coaches Hall of Fame. I have the unique relationship of not only being a student and a player, but also a son. So it gives me great joy and pride to be able to present him to you today for his induction. He taught us to always try to be your best, give your best, and prepare the best to be the humble professional. These are all valuable traits that contribute to your success in life. And that's what he truly believed in.
And we lived over, we lived over in the, I don't even know the name of the area. <laughs> <laughs> Northwood, Northwood, we lived over in the Northwood area. And we lived across from the school. I'd always park on the school side and then I'd walk across the street. Well, here's what I want you to, I want you to picture this. When you walk across the street, you're walking into a row home. And you've got a row home and, and your porch is to, your porch to your neighbor's porch is about from here to the railing there. It's not that far. The neighbors would sit out. On one side, we had Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano was an old Italian gentleman from Italy, his wife. They spoke broken English, you see. He loved to smoke cigars, he's a good man. Now, on the right, we had, we had a fellow by the name of Bill, and I don't know his wife's name. I, we call her Radar. <laughs> that goddamn woman, she would, anytime you came home, oh, the blind was up. That blind came up so fast and, and, and you couldn't come home late because the whole neighborhood would know about it the next day. And anyhow, Radar was sitting out there with a couple of people, and I'd get out of the car, and as I said before, my wife would go and get the kids a bag. She'd put them up, or she'd put the three boys in the tub next to she, she would do whatever women do. <laughs> and I walked up, and I, I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> I walked up to the house, and as I'm coming up the porch, I started to walk up the steps. Keith and his brother Carl and Kurt are hanging out the window. They're upstairs, right above the door. Hey, Dad, hey, Dad, what do you see this? You might not believe it. This is really something. Dad, come on up here, take a look at this. And I'm saying, well, what is it? Tell me what it is. Dad, when you put cold, cold water on your gun, as they disappear. <laughs> oh, my. I said, you remember when we were kids, you and I were young, and we were in your father's pickup truck, and we were fooling around? And she said, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and she said, your father caught us, and he'd run, he run, he run you in a house, and he ringed me. He was all over me. He had me scared to death. He said, you know, I've got political pool in this town. I'll run your ass in jail for 35 years. You don't do the right thing. And at that point, you know, I, I thought, I, I told my wife that story. She said, yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that. She says, that was some time ago. She said, is that what you're thinking about? I said, no. I said, tomorrow I'll be a free man. <laughs> You know, uh, I, it was great, and I appreciate it. He said, but uh, I, you know, it's awful expensive. And I said, it's expensive? Rich, tell me something. Do you mean to tell me that you had to pay to get to the Hall of Fame? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, it 
cost $150 a person, he's not got a big damn family. <laughs> I was concerned about that. And, uh, some of you are probably wondering right now why my wife isn't here with us tonight. <laughs> it's going to take a little longer to pick up on that. <laughs> but anyhow, she is here and we're having a nice time. I received, a, I, received, I received a carbon copy letter and I just want to read it to you. And it's, it was addressed, I guess the other inductees got it, and it was addressed to Tommy Gill. Tommy, you're the chairman, aren't you? He's the chairman of this committee. I got this letter, and I just want to read it to you, and you can have it later. Dear Mr. Gill, we appreciate your quick response to our letter regarding diversity and the lack of it within your organization. However, your selection of the inductees this year is highly appropriate and appreciated and falls well within our standards of her quality. We wish you much success in your future endeavors. That's from John Massendorf, Director of Diversity, American Association of Retired People. <laughs> <laughs> you got everybody on you, don't you, Tom? <laughs> and nothing about that. Okay, anyhow, I'd just like to say that I want to thank the selection committee for for reaching out and respecting and honoring political correctness and diversity all right, in your selection of these inductees. We've got a great bunch of guys. Uh, they, I, I think for myself, I keep looking at the, I keep looking at my watch, I'm looking at the door, looking for the driver's going to take me back to the nursing home. Uh, we're having fun here, we're enjoying ourselves. Uh, Mort was, uh, I thought Mort was uh, uh, just an outstanding coach. He did a lot for lacrosse. He was, I think, a pioneer where he was up north. We got coaches that spread out uh, up north, Maine at that time, uh, the states up there. There wasn't too many lacrosse teams. And you go out west and you see, you see the same thing. And, and these, these fellas really worked hard at the game. And uh, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, I, I felt good about that. I came in, I came in with, uh, uh, with uh, Dick Slaza. I came with Dick Slaza, we had to fly in today, and a funny thing happened, I said, Dick, did you have a good flight where you're sitting? He said, yeah, he said, it was all right. He said, I was sitting next to a young woman. He said, she, she was just about, he says, I don't know, she was just young, but she had an infant. And at that point, the pilot came on, he said, and the pilot said, we're gonna descend in just a short period of time. Now make sure when we descend, you put your seatbelt on. Well, she started to put her seatbelt on. When she put her seatbelt on, she proceeded to breastfeed her baby. And Rich, he was a little embarrassed about that. It bothered him. And he was concerned, and he felt very uncomfortable. Well, they landed the plane. The woman put the baby back, and she said, you know, she said, I, I appreciate you being considerate. I know this is not, uh, uh, you were uncomfortable about this situation. But I want you to know this. My doctor told me that when you descend, in an airplane from a high distance, when you descend, it equalizes the pressure in the ear, and the baby doesn't feel any pain. And Dick looked at me and he said, you know, in all these years I've been chewing gum. They were the top team. They won every year. They're always undefeated. They were packed with all Americans. I wanted to go out there and play with them. And I went on out and I made the squad. And I was really happy about that. During the course of the year, we went down to Virginia. And when we went down to Virginia, I had an opportunity to be on the field with a gentleman that I truly admired and respected. And that was Gene Corbin. 
And I, I always, I'll, I'll never forget this. We played the game and I thought to myself, I can't wait to get back to Baltimore and go down the corner and tell my friends, tell all my friends, I was with Gene Corbin on the same field with him. Because I read so much about him in the paper, saw his picture, heard his comments. Boy, he was really instrumental in, 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 in inspiring somebody. And, uh, and I really, I, I just love him. And then the game was over. He invited us all over to his house, all over to his house and his wife Lena, and we went on over, and I want to tell you something, I'm a high school kid. These guys are all graduates for a long time, much my senior, and I go over, and I'm sitting down, and he comes over, puts his hand on my shoulder, and says, hi, Carl. I almost flipped out. I think I wet my pants, I'm not sure. <laughs> this man that I admired, and I really did, I admired the hell out of him, and I watched him, couldn't take my eyes off of him or his wife, and the, and the connection <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, they were just a beautiful couple together. They really were. They were just a fantastic match. And I looked at them and I thought to myself, well, that's, I, I sure like to be like that. You know, I really feel that I, I, if, I, if I were a coach, maybe I'd make something out of myself, you know. And at that point, he was there. And I can still remember, I've got his vision in my mind. He had a blue blazer on. He's coaching at Virginia. He's got a tie. He's got a tie like they were, a matching tie, Virginia colors. He's got khaki pants, you know. He's got them casual shoes on. And I'm looking at him. I'm saying, ain't he something? God bless him. <laughs> and then he's talking, and they were so congenial, social, going around meeting people. How are you doing? Smiling, laughing. You know, they were concerned about you. And at that point, he went over, and he took off that blazer. And when he, took, when he took that blazer off, he turned and laid it on the sofa, and I saw something that I had never seen in my life, and it shocked me. When he did that, he had the biggest tear in his shirt that I've ever seen. And I thought to myself, my God, he's my idol, and he's just like me. He's like, I, I, I had holes in my socks. I didn't have a shirt. <laughs> he's just like me. You know, he's down to earth. He's a guy who can get down and talk to people at a lower level, and he, and, but he's on top of the world, you know. He's just a super person, and he was, th those two, Lena you know, and your dad, Kevin, were, were inspiration to me, and, they, uh, and I knew then, that, boy, I wanted to be like that, that's how I want to live, that's a great way to live, and how social we were, and, and I appreciated that, and I got, it was, that, I think it was my first lean towards coaching, and uh, plus you made a lot more dip money than coal dancing. <laughs> you make a damn thing in cold days, and you always slide in at that. You know, <laughs> people throw bottles at you. <laughs> but anyhow, he was he was a, he was an inspiration to me, and I always appreciated that. All right, I'm, I'm getting mixed up here, guys. I'm, Kevin, I'm like you. I went and printed this stuff so big, I got so many pages, and I still can't see. It. All right, but I just want you to know that it's a, it's an honor to be inducted to the IMLCA. This is a coach's dream. It's, you know, being being recognized by your peers ain't nothing better than that, believe me. Nothing better than that. And I'm overwhelmed about that. I, I right now I'm gonna to have to go and acknowledge some people. And this is a this is a boring part of any banquet. If you've got to go to the bathroom, get up and go. <laughs> but I want to, I want to uh, introduce a couple of people. My son Keith and his wife Mary Beth. I've got my son Curtis and his wife Jean. My son Carl is here. And my daughter Brenda and her husband Tom Parker. And I want to thank you guys for all the support through the years. All right? You've really been great to me. Most importantly, I want to talk about my wife, Joan. She's been with me. I, I had that woman. She's probably seen more lacrosse game. I would say that I would say that Lena Park has seen more 
But my Jones has been all over. I've dragged her all over the nation for goofy goddamn across. <laughs> and we played, we played between 21,000 people in 19, 1965 or 19, uh, it, it was back, it was a long way back with the University of Arizona. And of course I had, I had uh, since I played football at the University of Arizona, I had an in with the equipment manager and also the head coach. So we had, we, it was, it was the uh, spring game. It wasn't like it was a big game, it was a spring game. And they had 21,000 people there. And what we did is we put on a show for them. It was, it, instead of looking like lacrosse, it was like wrestling lacrosse. You know, we <laughs> faked the hell out of it, banging people all over the place. And it was so much fun. And the coach said he would let the kids have 15 minute halftime so that we could get set up. We had the cages all set up, we got out there, had a super game. And it was just, it, that to me was a great experience. That started my, uh, coaching career out there. I taught at a local high school and I coached lacrosse at the University of Arizona. I'm very proud to say I've got two youngsters, not, they're not youngsters, but, but you are youngsters, what the hell. Two youngsters that are here tonight, Phil Bodenhorn and, and Scotty Hayes. Scott, where are you? Would you guys stand up? <laughs> and I'm so happy to see you here. It's a pleasure. The university team, our group out there, we really didn't get a lot of recognition. We had good teams, we were winning, and in, in fact, we had Scott's, uh, but I'm having a kind of, uh, Tommy Hayes. Tommy Hayes was one of the guys that came in and played against our team way back, and we had, he was playing for the Quantico Marines. Is that right, Tom? The towers, the water, the towers. You had a pretty good spot, but anyhow, it was great. I had an opportunity to go to local high schools. I was able, I called the high school. I was able to go to local high schools, four different high schools, and teach them a whole week. And I taught every PE class. And I was able to take the equipment from our kids and go over and try to get lacrosse started in all the high schools. I played four. We played the first high school lacrosse game uh, at a Flying Well School with the kids there. It was a great game. And then we played the second game at our school, at Amphitheater High School. And then the third game we went down and we played, I, I was able to teach these kids for a week. I went down at the Sunnyside High School, which has, which is predominantly England reservation kids. And I sat them down, I talked to them about the game. I told them it was their game. This is your game. Your people started this. This is an American game. And when we came out and played that week, I'll tell you something. I saw something I've never seen before, and I only wish I, would have, I could have filmed it. We weren't filming anything back then. These Indian kids came out, Pima County Indians, and they were at that reservation. They came out, they had their lacrosse sticks, and their sticks had streamers, beautiful, colorful streamers. And not a word was said on that field. These guys ran up and down, banged the hell out of one another, and it was so beautiful just to see. It was poetic, you know, to see those streamers flying from the sticks. Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. That was a good time. Uh, our Arizona team, they, uh, those guys gave me a tremendous effort out there, and I'll always remember you for that. Uh, I'd like to, I'd like now to recognize uh, our administration here, our, our athletic director, uh, uh, coach. He's here, Tim Leonard. He's here tonight. We've got, uh, uh, we've got uh, my other buddy, uh, Dan Crowley. I'm sorry, Dan. I'm losing it. Dan Crowley. Uh, Will Huff was supposed to be here. He's not here. And Sean Allen. And Sean's our new coach, and I want to tell you something, he's doing one hell of a job. This time, <laughs> I want to recognize a couple guys that were with me years back and through and, and have passed on. And I just uh, I think it's awful important we recognize those people, Jim and Je uh, Craig Saxon, Joe Ferrante, uh, Bradner, and Carl Bernick and Danny, uh, Danny Nolan. These are guys who played for me years ago and passed on. In fact, uh, Michelle Bernick is here with us this evening, somewhere out in the garden. Stu passed on, Joe Ardolino, Jeff Clark, Frank Mezzanotti, Tim Mahoney, Mark Roos, Ron Closser, Bob Terry was with us a little bit, 
and, uh, and to all the guys who played in our programs or, uh, during difficult times, our kids who are here tonight, you guys, I love you. There's no doubt about it. You can't have better. They talk about family. Well, we got family. We got family. And I really appreciate all you guys and what you've done for me over the years. You should be up here. And uh, the, uh, uh, you guys uh, just, I, I, I really appreciate everything you've done. And uh, I'm, I'm up here and I uh, can't find out where the hell I am. <laughs> 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 Uh, I want to give a special thanks to one person, Steve Marshall. Steve, you're in here somewhere. And, uh, Steve Marshall, you are one of the every, every, every school, there he is, every school should have, should have and probably has a Steve Marshall. He's like the catalyst, he's like the bond, he's, he's just like glue, and he's, he's just a fantastic person. He's a Towson spirit. He's a Towson spirit. Every, anything that happens in Towson, as far as lacrosse is concerned, it goes to Steve Marshall, and it's out to every one of our alumni people. So happy for you, Steve. Thank you so much. Woo! Hey, guys. I just want to, I want to say this, and I'm out of here. Uh, last night, I, had, I prayed. I prayed to our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for world peace because we're, in, we're really in hard times now. And I think more about my grandchildren than I do by ourselves. But I, I did that. I think it's awful important. And I pray for, that more people would accept the teaching of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we've fallen away a great deal. And that last thing is I, I thank the Lord for bringing you all into my life. I appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, God. Picture of all the thousand players and myself up here after this is all completed. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah.